Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to episode 5 in the Islamic knowledge series. In this today's episode, I have chosen Jannah Paradise as the topic. Allah maj'alna min ahliha may Allah make us from its inhabitants. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa afdul salati wa tamu taslim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. He has given us a body. This body will, we will leave behind this temporary vessel and it is our ruh, our soul, our spirit that that which he has created that shall not, never perish. So it will go on from this world to the next which is the barzakh world, the boundary between that life, the hereafter and this current life. From there it will go to Jannah. It will, or it will go to, inshallah it will go to Jannah, but it will be to the Akhirah the hereafter where the successful ones will be going to Jannah and the unsuccessful ones will be going to Jahannam, the fire. So today's topic is on paradise. The topic later on this week will be on the hellfire. It's a description of both. It is as Imam Bukhari in his Sahih Bukhari, his, his soundest collection of a hadith of the Prophet his sayings, his actions, his all the things that he approved of that became a sunnah it is a description in there and in this description we have uh, 17 chapters for, for Jannah we have 13 chapters for description of the fire so even Imam Bukhari how he organized it he made more chapters available for Jannah as if to show to have that to have give us hope in, in, in attaining success with it and his rewards so, Anas Radiyanu, he narrates in a hadith that Hufat in Jannah bil Makarih wa Hufat in Nar bil Shahawat. That here the Prophet say that Jannah is paradise, is surrounded by hardship, make note, and the fire is surrounded by desires, make note. Furthermore, Abu Huraira Radiyallahu Anu, he narrates in a hadith where Allah SWT is showing. Jibreel alayhi salam, Jannah and Jahannam, and when he shows him Jannah, Jibreel alayhi salam says, none shall hear of it except that they will want to enter it. And when he shows Jibreel alayhi salam, Jahannam, none shall hear of it except that they want to stay away from it. They will not want to enter it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he fills both sides with the, with the, with Makari. He fills both sides Jannah with hardship and Jahannam with desires such that now when Jibreel alayhi salam is told to look at both sides he says I fear none shall enter it in terms of Jannah because of the hardships that are put in front of it that one must go through to get to Jannah and when he looked at Jahannam he f I fear everyone shall enter it uh, so that's to show that to follow desires is an easy thing and to go to Jannah to Jahannam is, is one of those easy things if you just follow your desires and you do not have control of yourself. So we ask Allah to have that we have control in our lives, we have we have that responsibility in our lives and we abide by what Allah what pleases Allah SWT and what He's commanded us to do and to stay away from those things that one should refrain from as Allah SWT has uh, commanded us to do so. In it is only best for us. Allah knows best and we do not know. So in today's uh, episode is about uh, Jannah. It's like a walkthrough of Jannah through these compilation of Imam Bukhari, how he's given us a description of Jannah. And I want to imagine, I want us to imagine that we are now in this kind of like virtual reality kind of world. And I'm going to describe it in such a way that we kind of just open our eyes and we wake up and then we're in Jannah. Inshallah, maybe uh, we ask Allah that we, we get Jannah and in whichever way that we get Jannah. And uh, this is just a, this is just a kind of way to inspires and motivate us to do good deeds and to strive for Jannah. So uh, today's games, open world games, you know, they, they, they create these worlds, these, these developers and they create worlds and, and you have to say they look amazing, they look uh, magnificent and uh, you can really be immense in it and see how really lifelike it can be, uh, such like virtual reality set, sets as well. Um, but that is nothing compared to what Jannah is, what Allah SWT, the Creator is. These people who create these games, they are in. Uh, they have limited capacity, they have limited intelligence. Allah SWT is the one who has 
there is no restriction on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the world he has created of Jannah is, is something. And this is just a description of it. And inshallah, it kind of inspires us to do more good deeds. So the first thing is, okay, we wake up and we're in Jannah. First thing we'll notice is the clothes. So, وَيَلْبَسُونَ ثِيَابًا خُضْرًا مِنْ سُنْدُسٍ وَإِسْتَبْرَقٍ In the Quran it says, They will be dressed in green garments, made of fine silk and thick silk. And now look, here in this world, women are allowed to wear silk, but permissible. But for men, it's haram, it's forbidden. This this fine silk, this is the way it feels on your body. If one, one if a male has an issue with um, a medica medical issue, and silk is the thing that can be okay to wear, um, we should not... Um, make anything worse on the person then for them it's a different ruling but in Jannah silk nor shall their clothes wear out so even the clothes will not wear out here our clothes wear out and you know we give it to charity or so we should really even think about when we go and we buy you know because nowadays you can buy things that are um, uh, you know more cheaper for the cheaper brands you know if that is the case or even uh, you know a bit more better but we should try and buy clothes that we can then send straight to charity instead of always just anything that we've used and we've gone through it so many times that it's worn out and then we give it to charity. I mean, try, let's try and give better to the people who are giving to the poor people in terms of our charity. We can afford it if it's two pounds, three pounds, kind of a shirt or something. Um, we should try and change our minds to thinking, let's buy best for our fellow brothers and brother, fellow sisters who are less unfortunate than us. So the clothes will not wear out in Jannah, subhanAllah. Yeah, there will be no kind of... Um, uh, decrease in any kind of way, in any bad way, so it will always be just increase. Seats. So now we've woken up, we're wearing beautiful clothes, green garments, as I just mentioned, and uh, seats. Or what our seats will be, our seats be like? Since I mentioned this open world game and people with their reclining chairs and they're, they've got these gaming chairs that they'd be comfortable in, or in our own, whichever way, room we might be, we might have a favorite chair, maybe a rocking chair, reclining chair, or a sofa, or part of the place in the sofa we would like and we'd recline but you know we can't be there for like a long time sometimes our back aches with this in Jannah how is it again in the Quran they will recline therein on raised thrones and couches so we'll be in amazing and there'll be no back pain this pain that pain the ergonomics about the chair and that this raised throne will just be magnificent and everyone will have their own, they don't have to squeeze into a cushion or in, in, into a sofa, for example. So we'll have our own seats in Jannah raised and in that honor Allah SWT is going to give. So we woke up, clothes, we have, saw the clothes, we're uh, sitting on something and then we realize what the room. So now we're in the room, let's have a look around. In the field, Jannah Ghurafan, there's rooms in Jannah. Yura Dhuruha. Min butuniha wa butuniha min you will see from these rooms outside in and inside out they'll be the way the, the, the way they are there will be privacy as well every kind of as you come in the next one tents but every room then you know, uh, people can see inside and outside I guess to a point where uh, it's nothing about seeing anything that's going to be private but this is how the rooms are you can the way the walls are you can see out and in. it's not like there's a, 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 a an obstacle, a wall that you can't see out, you can actually see inside. You, you, if you want to go look outside into the, your kingdom, you can see far beyond and uh, vice versa. So then the Sahabas, they asked, Liman hiya ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So for who are they, these 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 rooms? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Hiya liman ataba al-kalam wa at'am al-tu'am wa adam al-suyam wa salla lillahi bil-layli wa nasu niya. He said these are for the people who are, who speak well, who speak who who speak beautifully, who don't, as I mentioned in our previous talk about the the etiquettes of speech, uh, they speak in the right way, they do not slander wrong things, say bad words and spread false rumors and swear and backbite and all these sorts of things, but their speech is beautiful. And they feed others. So I've also mentioned about the process of loving the Ash'ariyin tribe because they would share the food how they would when there was difficulty times. So you feed others. Feed others in Ramadan as well, especially. Uh, and they continuously fast. They fast a lot. They regularly fast. These rooms are for such people. And they perform salah for, salah for Allah and 
people are asleep. So in the middle of the night, in the last third of the night, the best time for tahajjud, they are there praying, standing up, uh, as was the practice of the Prophet was the rest of the people are asleep. So these rooms are for them. Moving on, okay, we have rooms, we have tents, we have tents as well. In the Jannah, la khayma min durratin mujawwafatin. In Jannah, there are tents of hollow pearl. Arduha sittuna milan. It's uh, width is like 60 miles. Massive, massive tents for people. Yeah. Indeed, in Paris, there's a great tent of hollowed pearls. Its breadth, it breadth is 60 miles in every corner. And these are for families. They everyone is in a separate tent and that you know everyone is far from each other there's no one invading in kind of any privacy as such moving on from tents now we're in this abode where we're going to see we're going to notice our wife our husband so women and men so the women and men the description of them in gender all of them 33 eight years of age nobody elder than that and everybody in that prime age isa islam when he was raised up he was 33 years old and he will come back towards the end of time each man will have two wives. If you have one wife in this world, you will get another wife in the hereafter. You have no wives here, you'll get two wives there. You have two already here, you'll get uh, none there. Two of them will be from here. And the wives are, they're, they're not uncomparable to the Hurul Ain, the maidens of Jannah. And the maidens of Jannah, every man will have 72. Two wives and 72 Hurul Ain. Likuli Rajulim Minhu Zawjatan. You'll have two wives. Wearing 70 bracelets, the women in the description, they were wearing 70 bracelets with the marrow of their shins being visible from behind them. And parental guidance. Continue. He will be given the strength, the man will be given the strength of a hundred, of a hundred men. The women, every time, the man and women, uh, they have a relationship they she, they will she will be a virgin every single time and there'll be no pregnancy in jannah as well parental guidance over let's continue the men so there's only beauty for everybody as well, well the men will be beautiful the women will be beautiful there'll be no kind of deficiency in anything in any way whatsoever the men of paradise they'll be ahlul jannah jurdun murudun kuhlun yeah they will be without body hair they will be beautiful and they'll have kuhl in their eyes the, that makes the eye come out and more and beautiful, and be more beautiful in their in their on their eyelids. So their eyes will be even more uh, sh coming out with um, with a, uh, a nice a nice sight. The youth does not come to an end. So I said thirty three years old. You know, everybody's gonna be thirty three years old. Moving on from the inhabitants. All right, now we open the door of our tent, of our palace, of our room. And we're going out of our house, mansion, we go out. What do we see? We see the environment. And what is the environment? So the Sahaba anhum, asked, the creation is made of water. What is Jannah made of? So Jannah is made of bricks of silver and gold. So amazing. We will see uh, the mortar, the holding the bricks together is going to be made of musk, strong fragrance. And it's pebbles. You're going to see outside in the environment are pearls and rubies. And its earth is of saffron. And then you're walking outside in this beautiful, beautiful place, no, nothing that the eyes have ever seen. There'll be a tree, and there's lots of, lots of trees. The smallest tree in Jannah is the size of um, 10 times this world. The smallest tree in Jannah is the size of this world 10 times. That's how big this that tree will be, the smallest tree in Jannah. And there is the one tree, there is a tree in Jannah, no one tree, there's many, but this is just an example of one of them. There's a tree in the Jannah, la shajaratan yasiru arraqibu fi dhilliha mi'atasana. That there is a tree in Jannah. A rider will tra travel in its shade for a hundred years. He will ride and still won't get to the end of that shade of that tree, that immense size of that tree. And trees, there's the trunks will be of gold and the branches of pearls and precious stones and rubies and sapphires and emeralds moving on the, the tree we have fruits so the fruits is the fruits is going to be its volume is going to be massive and the most ripest and the juiciest and the 
things you've never tasted ever before. It's 200 liters, they're gonna be massive fruits. 200 liters capacity of one fruit. As we carry on, fruits, now birds. So the birds in it, now these are the ones we can eat. We think of something, it kind of comes in prepared. And then once we've finished, it kind of comes back, to, it gets back to itself and flies off. There is no death in Jannah. فِيهَا طَيْرٌ عَنَاقُهَا كَعَنَاكِ الْجُزُرُ There are birds, plump, and the necks are like camels, the size of camels. This is like, uh, what do we have? We have KFC, this is uh, HFC, PFC, we have so many. This is JFC, this is Jannah fried chicken. Those who consume it are more plump than it. Right? So the birds and the necks are of like camels, the sizes, the plump indeed. Horses. Now the Bedouins, when you, they are the, the nomads from the Arabs, they they love their horses. They love they love the most simplest things. So once a, one one Bedouin came to the Prophet Sallam, and all he was worried about for Jannah was about his horse. He loves horses. Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inni Khayla and I love horses. Afu Jannah Khayl. Is there horses in Jannah? He wanted to know if they're just horses in Jannah. Subhanallah. This is just the, this is the mind of a Bedouin. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ replied, "Indeed, uh, there'll be horses uh, of rubies with two wings as well. You can fly with these uh, horses, and you should be carried on it. Then it will fly with you wherever you want." Subhanallah. Horses. So that was this is a garden tree. Horses, birds. We just kind of spoken about that. Then there's a river stream going past you. This is a river. In the field, Jannah, Bahrul. ما وبحر العسل وبحر اللبن وبحر الخمر. Indeed, there's four seas. One of milk, the milk like you've never tasted before, sweet milk. You'll have honey, a honey that you've never tasted ever before. There will be wine, and there'll be water. And wine is the one that is not intoxicating as well. We're in this lockdown. We're in this, and there's issues, and there's people. The, the, the things of buying essential things, they want to go and buy alcohol and they'll buy spirits and, and so on and so forth. So they put restrictions on such things as well. This is the this is them in their kind of uh, in, in their kind of uh, testing times, they go to alcohol. Yeah, subhanAllah. But at least us we should go to our prayers and go to our duas and our dhikr and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there there is in enjoyment, no testing times, no tribulations in Jannah is uh, wine unintoxicating so these 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 seas these, these these four seas and they will have the rivers flowing from them the streams flowing from them so we'll have rivers of all these four as well the levels of jannah subhanallah there's seven levels all the people of the, the prophet will be in jannah to firdaus and each level apart from jannah to firdaus each level has hundred levels within each level and between in from one level to another level in each level is hundred light uh, hundred years 100 light years, 100, you know, what kind of speed of light years, or what uh, the process and left it open. So, but there's uh, 100 years between each level in Jannah of uh, of each level with seven levels, 100 levels between each level, and from one level to another, 100 years. So, subhanallah, the immense size of Jannah that Allah SWT has created and created just for the believers, for the mu'min, may Allah make us from them. and. Jannah al Firdos, the Firdos, the place for the, the, the believers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to be from such. That will have uh, exactly the number of um, ayahs from the Quran, its levels that there. And uh, from the levels, we have rows. So I've talked about levels. Now we're just talking about rows, but this is now I'm talking about rows. The people of paradise are 120 rows. So all those who are going to go to Jannah will be from 120 rows. 80 is going to be from the Prophet Sallallahu people, the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Subhanallah. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, would you be pleased with the quarter to the Sahabas? He, he started off small. Would you be pleased with the quarter that your amount being a quarter from the people who enter Jannah? They said, yes. Then he carried on. Would you want to be a third of the people of paradise, these rows? And he said, yes. And then he went to half. Would you want to be half? And yes, indeed. But really, we are two thirds. Uh, two thirds from the people of paradise will be from uh, from these rows. Uh, two thirds will be from us. From the 120 rows, from 80 of them will be will be uh, from the prophet, uh, the Ummah of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. 
Now there is a suk. Now what's the suk for? Well, to send our wife to the suk in paradise, or the wife sends the husband to the suk in paradise to buy stuff. No, subhanallah. This is a place where there is no time, there is no orbit, planets orbiting, there is no moon and sun, so there is nothing to tell us of denote time as such. And we'll be in Jannah and there'll be nothing like boredom and nothing like fatigue and nothing like that sort of business. So Allah SWT has created a place, a souk, to go and uh, visit. So it changes things up a bit. You can go to the souk, you can mingle and socialize with other people. So there's all this kind of, kind of souk. Do you need to buy anything with money? No, you can actually just go and whatever you feel like you want, you can buy. Normally, there's a place where you all socialize, gather together. You'll see somebody, maybe they thought in their kind of, you know, like how we have Minecraft and people make things. Someone's thought of something and they're wearing it. They thought of something, they're wearing it. You like that. You want a piece of that. So you can just imagine that as well and you can copy that and that impression came on you. So subhanAllah, it's a place like that. It's a sort of place that we kind of come together. There's things to do. You can't just be in Jannah and then that's what we're going to do. This, Allah has made a souk for us as well, subhanAllah. From the souk, we go to the upper residences. And indeed, the people of paradise shall see the upper chamber like they see the eastern western star. So like the right in the disappearing, the far edge of the sky. This is for the people of the upper residences. And who are these for? There's, there's ascendance, there's levels and there's people who are in more ascending levels depending on their deeds. Are those for the prophets? They were, the prophet was asked, yes. And the groups who had faith in Allah and his messenger and believed in the messenger. So there is upper residences as well. Let's try and strive to memorize the Quran. Every mem every memory, everything we memorize, we can go up and up in Jannah. Let's try and do more good deeds, more good, and we want to be from the highest. Wherever you may end up, we just want Jannah. Yes, wherever we may end up, there will be never that we feel any. Uh, we will be so happy with what we have. We will be so content with what we have. Wherever we are, it will always be increasing every single time, every single moment. And finally, Aram will be brought between the two gates of Jannah and Jahannam there will be a ram and then it will be it will be slaughtered and it won't die to prove that there is no death there is forever eternity and no death this is the moment the disbelievers will be in the world they still have that hope of coming out but then when they see that they will know that they will be in this Jahannam forever and as for the Muslims and the Mu'mins, the ones who believe, they will know this is the moment of rejoicing that we'll be in this place forever and ever. And there's no change to that. So we ask Allah to make us from the Jannah. There will be congestion of people going in into the gate just to show that a lot of people will enter Jannah as well. So may Allah make us from that.